Hello my beautiful friends and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the passato prossimo. So what is passato prossimo and where is the difference with other kind of pasts? So first of all, the passato prossimo refers to some actions that happened in the past but the consequences are still in the present. So you can still have some see some effects of those actions in the present. Grammatically speaking, how do we make the passato prossimo? We need two things. First is the auxiliary verb, which is essere or avere, at the present tense. If you're not familiar with the present tense, I will recommend you to check my video on how to make the present. And second, we need the participio, passato. So, um, how do we make the participio passato? There are three categories of verbs, and again, if you're not familiar, check my previous videos. The categories are are, ere, ire. Of course, there are exceptions, but according to the groups, are, ere, ire, we have a role to make the, pre the participio passato. If the verb ends in are, such as mangiare, the participio passato will be mangiato, mangiare, mangiato. If the verb ends in ere, such as vendere, to sell, the participio will be venduto, so in uto. If uh, the verb belongs to the third group, so in ire, such as partire, to live, the participio passato will be partito, so in ito. Mangiare, mangiato. Vendere, venduto, partire, partito. Before the participio passato, we have to put the auxiliary at the present tense. So, io ho mangiato, io sono partito, io ho venduto. What is the passato prossimo of the auxiliary verbs? It's io sono stato, io ho avuto. So, same thing auxiliary verb at present, participio passato, which in the case of the auxiliary is um, stato and avuto. But how can I know if I have to use the verb to have, avere or to be, essere? Um, so first of all, we need to um, divide verbs into two categories, transitivi, intransitivi. And um, it's a little bit more complicated sometimes than that, but mainly all of the verbs that uh, reply to the questions who and what are transitivi. For example, I can say io ho mangiato, I have eaten. And this verb, with this verb, I can ask the questions what or who, <laughs> but mainly what with this verb mangiare. So, io ho mangiato una mela, I have eaten an apple. So this means that mangiare is a transitive, transitivo, transitive verb, so I can use the auxiliary avere, io ho mangiato. But if I want to say, um, I've left the house, sono uscito di casa, and you'll notice that the auxiliary that I'm using now is not avere anymore, but is essere, io sono uscito. This is because the verb uscire, to live, doesn't let me answer the questions who and what. At maybe with whom, yes, I've left the house with my brother, but not who and not what. This is the verb, is in, this is because the verb is intransitivo. And because it's intransitivo, I will use auxiliary to be. Io sono uscito, io ho mangiato. This is the main role. So now you just need to practice how to use the participio passato and you will be able to make the passato prossimo of, of each verb. Now, you may think that for some, uh, you may see that um, for some events, some may use the passato remoto and some may use the passato prossimo. But why? This is because um, sometimes difference between passato prossimo and passato remoto is very subtle. It's mainly a psychological distance. So if I, if for me an event is so, so much in the past that has no effects on the present, such as if I'm talking about the First World War, for example, I could use the passato prossimo to underline, to emphasize that it's really in the past. 
but if for me the same event could have still some consequences in my life or on things around me, around me I could use the passato prossimo. So there are some events that you'll know for sure which one to pick, which tends to pick. But there are some events that the line is very subtle, so there is really not a wrong answer, it's mainly about perception. I hope it was helpful, I hope it helped you out. Um, now my suggestion is just to go and practice, so exercises, first to, um, to make yourself familiar with the rules, grammatical rules, and then to read as much as you can to apply and to see if this tense used in the context. But for anything, if you have any special requests or any doubts or anything else you would like to tell me in the comments below, please do it because I read all of the comments. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day. Bye!